This one, I guess I didn't cover it. Um, this is kind of a version of this one. So, um, so, so let me just quickly answer and show you how it's the version of this one. So here, the the properties that you need to do to calculate momentum. Um, so momentum is mass times velocity. Um, your textbook, for some reason, avoids giving you that definition. The slides too. So to know the momentum, you need to know mass. And um, the velocity comes in two parts. It comes in speed, the magnitude of velocity, and direction of motion. And I guess the tricky part was uh, kinetic energy wasn't, I mean, you could figure out momentum from kinetic energy, but once you know speed, these two are kind of redundant. So speed is the better answer. Okay, so those three things are what I chose here. And with the uh, angular momentum, there's an analogy there. It's a kind of angular rotational version of momentum. So um, there's a rotational version of mass that would be the, um, that would have been rotational inertia that's not there. Now, rotational inertia can be figured out from mass and how it's distributed. So how it's a displacement from center of rotation. Um, so that's one, um, inertia or mass part. And then you need to know um, the rotational version of uh, velocity, uh, speed and direction of motion. So the rotational version of velocity would be, um, it could, wow, I, I think I should have done this more properly from scratch. Um, somehow I don't think it's gonna be rotational kinetic energy. Um, if I had to guess based on how things are laid out, okay, so, um, <laughs> it's using two different, uh, let me just point this out. Uh, so, you know, for this class, we're not gonna dwell too much on um, <laughs> these mechanical relationships. So it's fine if uh, these are glazing over. So when you have angular momentum, which we usually use a letter L to represent, uh, there's two different ways you can express angular momentum. The way I was trying to do that's not supported by these choices is uh, angular or rotational inertia represented by letter I times angular velocity represented by letter omega. Um, and it's technically a vector quantity. Um, there's a different, so this is a, a expression for angular momentum that's usually useful for an extended body uh, where the formula for rotational inertia is a little bit complicated. Um, if you have a different situation, and I think this is a situation that's more applicable to astronomy, where you have some center of rotation, maybe that's your sun, and you have a point mass, uh, maybe this is Earth. I mean, if Earth is not a point mass, but in an astronomical scale, in the solar system scale, Earth looks kind of like a point mass. Uh, in that case, you can figure out the angular momentum um, through knowing this, through knowing what's called the lever arm, the distance. So that's the displacement from center of rotation. And, um, and so the expression here for angular momentum would be this, um, it's gonna be, the displacement, or uh, I used the letter D there. Let me use a more standard letter. The more standard letter there is actually R for weird reason, R for radius, um, R. And there's a special type of product uh, it's called the cross product that we are never gonna mention again in this class, um, <laughs> times the momentum as a vector quantity. So um, here I need to know the momentum of Earth and that momentum of Earth is now what we are talking about in the previous question, mass times velocity as a vector quantity. So what's uh, missing here is the velocity. And yeah, it's uh, not the easiest question. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna leave it be because um, for homework, you have infinite number of tries and you know, if you check kinetic energy and that leads you to the thing saying it, no, it's not the correct answer, then you have additional try to uncheck kinetic energy. I think the presence of kinetic energy is what makes it uh, more tricky than it needs to be, but um, yeah. All right, so 
that's covered now. Uh, let me know if any questions. Um, angular momentum is important. I, I think that's why I didn't want to skip it, even though uh, it's got ways to be complicated. Uh, when we talk about uh, formation of solar system or galaxy, uh, so the answer to the questions like, why is the solar system mostly flat? Why is the galaxy mostly flat? The answer there is conservation of angular momentum. So, so we do need to introduce the idea of angular momentum. But most of the time, we are not going to be using the mathematical expression. <laughs>